Hello Frugal fans, once again this is Captain Frugal and I'm reviewing my stash to save you cash and today I'll be reviewing the Superior Foes of Spider-Man number 16. Alright Frugal fans, this issue is written by Nick Spencer and the artist once again is Steve Weaver. This issue can be purchased digitally or as a back issue or in the third trade paperback. Now uh, this issue is the second to the last one, this wraps up after this, so just as a warning. This might have some spoilers. All right, so this issue starts with a discussion <laughs> between a Uber driver, which is like a taxi kind of thing, but oh, don't tell them that, and the Punisher, because the Punisher is going into town because he's heard about major crime organizations in the area, and he plans to take them out. Next, we cut to a scene where Fred's girlfriend is mad, and she's pointing a shotgun at Fred. She's clearly still mad about him with the incident with Bullseye. If you don't recall that, check out a previous review or read the issue. You'll see why. She shoots at Fred, <laughs> and so he decides to leave and use his jet boots and, and take off. You know, let her cool off a little bit after that incident, which she had good reason to be mad. We then cut to Mach 7 as he contacts Tony Stark with help, for help, I mean, with the Bullseye situation. Because, you know, he's found out about all this going on for the big meeting, and he's like, I'm going to need some help with this. But, you know, unfortunately for him, Tony blows him off. You know? So then we see a text with, uh, that someone tips off Mach 7 that Fred will be at the Riverside docks. They'll tell him exactly where he's going to be. So before he's just getting for help, now he knows. It's like, holy crap, now this is all going to go down. So Mach 7 leaves and almost forgets his cell phone. I won't tell you what happens when he goes to get it back, but if you look at the picture, you'll see. All right, so next we are back with Fred again and the gang at the docks. And we find the steed, uh, that speed demon painted Silvermane's head like Paul Stanley of Kiss. Star child, baby! That's just awesome. Trust me, you've got to see this. It's hilarious. Shortly after that, we go back to the graveyard, if you recall from last issue, where the Shocker was buried. The Shocker is starting to flip out when he is suddenly rescued by Hydro Man. Yes, the same Hydro Man that screwed him over earlier. The uh, Shocker then gives Hydra Man what he deserves and says no more second chances. So this is now a pissed off Shocker. And remember, as I said before my previous uh, reviews, that some people might think the Shocker's out of character. But you got to remember, even though he's called a wuss, that was Fred's view of him. Shocker here is actually quite smart. You've seen him pull off some good moves and things like that. And maybe this is a segue of what's to come. Only time will tell. We then get back to Fred and the gang at the docks. And they're waiting for their meeting. They start the meeting and everything seems to be going great until Tombstone and his group come in. And, of course, they realize then they've been sold out by the Beatle. But before that, if we go any farther, we find out that Mr. Negative and Madame Mask are also there as well now. So we find out that every member of the team has screwed everybody over. So not long after, of course, a fight erupts. And Fred turns off and runs, as far as we know. Unfortunately, though, he runs into the chameleon or the owl. Uh, Boomerang gets a serious beat down, but we find out later, well, maybe I don't want to spoil this too much for you, so put your hands in your ears or something like that, or turn this off at this point, or mute it, because I don't want to ruin it, otherwise you have been warned that it was actually not Fred. Remember, the safe that Fred broke into at the Chameleon's Lair? Well, it had been a serum in there that he used to transform his appearance, and that he abducted a pitch, uh, pitcher for the Mets. So then we get to see Fred out in the field. That he's out there to pitch a ball game. So once again, I warned you about that spoiler, so you can't get mad at me. All right, so now that we've done that, let's look at the pros and cons. First, the pros. Once again, great story progression. This is the second to last issue. It's making me sad the series is ending. It has interesting events. What will the Shocker do next? And, you know, uh, who did Fred set up to take the fall for him? Because you know, remember, that's not Boomerang getting this massive beatdown. The story makes you really want to see this last issue to see what happens to the gang. And this book is finishing strong. So let's look at some of the cons. None. This book ends. That's the only thing I have sad to say, but I cannot wait till next issue. So that said, what's considered the grade? The grade can be nothing less than an A+. This book is a must-read for any comic fan or any fan of general reading. It's a great story with lots of turns and twists. Once again, don't let the superior ha you know, tag take you away from this. It doesn't have a whole lot to do with that superior Spider-Man stuff. Slot doesn't write this, so you don't have to worry about it sucking. All right, so with that said, that's the end of this issue. Hope you enjoyed. 
Thanks again, Frugal fans. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to remember to hit like and subscribe. If you'd like to see more reviews, you can also check us out at thehenchmenslounge.com. And if you want to keep up and keep track of what I post, you can also follow me on my Twitter at Captain Frugal. Until then, keep it frugal.